Good day, this is Dr. Conrad Miller. Welcome to your 2020 annual Fukushima update. Fukushima is the place in northeast Japan, about 150 miles from Tokyo, where the worst man-made industrial accident has ever occurred on Earth, where there was an undersea earthquake creating a tsunami which struck the nuclear plant on March 11, 2011 and devastated the plant. Explosions resulted in three of the reactors spewing radioactivity all around the world and of course around the area of Fukushima which is a prefecture, it's kind of like a state in Japan and it's about the size of Connecticut and radioactivity went all around the, the whole prefecture including in the forests, up in the mountains, in the water, and to this day it remains severely radiologically contaminated. Yet they want to hold the Olympics there in Fukushima, Olympic events. You should know that the accident is still ongoing. Every day 150 tons of radioactive water from the plants, from the plant itself, actually the six reactors, run into the ocean. This radioactively contaminated water is measured mostly as cesium. Cesium is the easiest thing to measure, but actually there are hundreds of radionuclides that result from fissioning uranium to produce heat, to boil water, to create steam, to turn a turbine to create electricity. It's not kind of the hard way to create it because nuclear waste is created, all these radionuclides. Cesium has a half-life of 30 years, which means half of it is gone in 30 years and half of it remains 30 years later. But you have to worry about any radionuclide because it has to be considered in terms of its hazardous life. The hazardous life of any, radio, any radionuclide is 10 to 20 times its half-life. So for cesium, that would be 300 to 600 years. Cesium, the body reads like it's potassium. Potassium is the most plentiful electrolyte in all of your cells. These radioactive radio radionuclides uh, disintegrate, uh, and they, the nucleus disintegrates and gives off a beam, either alpha, beta, or gamma, and the beam strikes your cell, your DNA in your cell. It can disrupt the DNA, and it can cause a mutation, or the cell could heal the crack or the break well, but if the mutation continues to propagate uh, as the cell multiplies each time, Sometimes these mutations remain abnormal and they are, are cells that are, we call cancers. Cancers are mutation, mutated cells that reproduce themselves over and over again. There's also strontium is another radionuclide you have to know about. That one is written by the body as calcium. It's like calcium. You look on your periodic table from your chemistry class, you'll see it's in the same line. And strontium gets into your bones because your body thinks it's calcium. And strontium is radioactive. It has, th has a 30 year half life. And again, it has a hazardous life of 300 to 600 years. And it gets into your bone and by your bone marrow. And it can radiate the bone marrow and cause acute leukemia, where your red, uh, white blood cells multiply crazily and cancerously. Then there's plutonium that with a 24,000 year half-life, that's plutonium-239, and a hazardous life of 240,000 to 480,000 years. Uh, it's kind of hard to contemplate. But that, that gets into your lung, a little particle that can fit into your lung, and just a millionth of a gram is enough to cause lung cancer. It takes usually 20 to 30 years to develop. Uh, there are 454 grams in one pound, 
and a microgram is a millionth of a gram, so theoretically that's 454 million lung cancers that could be produced by just one pound of plutonium. 20 pounds could theoretically kill everybody on the earth if the plutonium could separate into little teeny weeny particles. So we have to worry about the Olympics now. So all you people who are playing softball, you young ladies and men who, who will participate in the Olympics, I don't know what they've told you, but Fukushima Prefecture and Fukushima Village and town, they are still severely radiologically contaminated and nobody should really be there playing or living there. They're going to have a torch run that's going to th go through all these towns just to showcase how beautiful Fukushima is today and how wonderful it is. But there are hot spots in the roads where they're going to be running and local people know that certain sp hot spots have to be um, warily gone past and you have to roll the windows up in your cars, for example, when you're uh, on this road, Route 6, that they're going to have the torch run start on March 26th, which really should be stopped. Everything should really be moved to Tokyo, 150 miles away, and then the problem would be taken care of. So uh, I will have some uh, petitions that you can sign uh, on the, in the description and in the comments to move the Olympics events that are scheduled in Fukushima to a safer place where the, where the radiation is much lower. The, there are microparticles that have been created from the explosions of units one through three and uh, these things have been found as far away as towns like Tsukuba, which is 127 miles away, they found the microparticle that combines either cesium or plutonium. And if that's ingested like dust and breathed into your lung, that can cause a lung cancer or it can get into other parts of your body and cause cancers there too. Now, they want to clean the plant up. They hope they can get all the debris and the spent fuel out by 2031. But they've had problems. But they've been very inventive. And they have created robots to do the work because people can't go inside these reactors. Because the radiation counts are so high that you would get a fatal dose in a few minutes. But the robots aren't doing very well either because the radiation has disabled them w within minutes. But they keep trying and uh, they hope they can get it, everything done by 2031. For the Olympics, they want to feed the Olympians food grown in Fukushima. The South Koreans object to that, for example. And so should you. Because remember that the, everything that's grown in Fukushima Theoretically, the dust and the water and the rain and the snow can bring more contamination back into the plants. The cattle uh, have been monitored pretty closely. Theoretically, they say it's safe, but they have to be fed with hay and feed, not grown or produced in Fukushima. So that's another question. And then there's another me way to measure radioactivity and that's becquerels per kilogram. So for food in Germany, for example, they only allow five becquerels per kilogram. Japan allows 100 becquerels per kilogram. So they're testing and saying that the food is safe, but they're testing at 100 becquerels per kilogram. A becquerel is one disintegration of a nucleus. So these, these foods aren't going to be safe either. Now, they also have this water they've been collecting. What happened was they can't find the, the nuclear cores. The cores have gone through the containment and of each, each of these, radi these um, reactor cores. And they, the cores 
they say they can't find them because they've melted into the bottom and into the water, into the groundwater. So the groundwater is contaminated. Every day it's contaminated. That's why there's 150 tons of radioactive water that are leaking into the Pacific Ocean every day. And that's why you should think about that when you think about going to Fukushima and participating in the Olympics there. Uh, the, the company that runs the plant, TEPCO, they really want to just dump all the water that they've been holding in tanks into the Pacific Ocean, but the locals won't let them. And of course, the fishing industry doesn't want that. The fish uh, seem to be testing better lately, but if they dump that water, it won't be safe. Now, the other thing you should know is that in the water, they ha they've been using this thing called an advanced liquid processing system to remove the radionuclides from the water. But the thing is, this cannot filter out something called tritium. Tritium, according to the grandfather of health physics, Dr. Carl Morgan said, this is the only radionuclide for which we assume as much is taken into the body via skin penetration as by inhalation. It is the most invasive of all radionuclides and distributes itself rather uniformly to all organs and all body tissues uh, in the body. It presents a somatic, genetic, and teratogenic, which means cancerous, risk. It cannot be separated from liquid waste by evaporation, a process used to concentrate most radionuclides, especially in nuclear reactors. So that's what's in those, those big tanks of water. And uh, the tritium has a half-life of 12.3 years and a hazardous life of 123 to 246 years. So that water really has to be held for at least 123 years. And the TEPCO company wants to dump it in the ocean. So those are some of the things you should think about. Uh, the torch run, they have hot spots where you should know that uh, the background radiation that everybody's exposed to on the Earth is about 100 millirems per year. And some of these hot spots have 6,000 or 62,000 millirems exposure per year uh, at the rate uh, that we measure it. And um, it's not safe. The reason you haven't heard about this, they have a State Secrets Act in Japan that they are using to intimidate writers and TV broadcasters. So uh, you could go to jail for 10 years if you publish or write or say anything that they want to prosecute you for that says anything negative about nuclear power or Fukushima. And you should know that when these kids are going to be running on the roads, the junior high school kids and the high school kids, they're going to be running on these courses where the, the hot spots are very high and dangerous. Um, so that's basically the story. They've also collected bags of soil that, are ha that hold up to a ton of soil that's radioactive. And some of the 91 of those soil bags washed away when the typhoon hit Japan, and half of them 25 of those bags of the 91 were found empty. So who knows where they went. So the final conclusions that I want to leave you with are that, quoting from Fairwinds and Arnie Gunderson, who went to Japan and took readings and is warning everybody about the contamination still being there and very unlikely that it will be any better for the next 300 to 600 years at least because of all the contamination in the forests and the mountains, etc. Uh, damage to the environment and people's lives is somewhere between long-term to permanent. That's what the people at Simpl Simply Info say of Fukushima site. What we do know is that three out of three reactors melted down when challenged with a complex natural disaster. We know that all three melted through their reactor vessels. We know that all three suffered containment failures that allowed microscopic particles of nuclear, nuclear fuel to escape into the air and sea. Some of these were found as 
120 miles away from the, the plant. Such a disaster could repeat itself anywhere that reactors operate and unpredictable events exist. With it leaving communities destroyed, lives upended, and health challenged. So that's your basic story for 2020. I hope all you softball players and all you people considering participating in the games that are going to be played in Fukushima speak up, insist that you don't want to be exposed to radiation that you, you just don't have to. You don't, there's no need for this. It's just to make nuclear power look good in Japan. And they've raised the level of acceptable radiation 20 times above the 100 milligrams as a radiologic emergency, so they say. But that's not really acceptable. So sign the petitions if you can. Tell all your teammates to say you don't want to play there. You don't want to eat the food from Fukushima. You want to participate in the Olympics. Tokyo is pretty much okay, I guess, at this point. Still have some places where they detect 4,000 becquerels per kilogram in the dust, but it's nothing like Fukushima. And I hope that you can do what you can to save yourselves. This is Dr. Conrad Miller signing off. Your Fukushima update 2020. And next year we'll do this again. Thank you.